Do you remember that viral clip of a former Ariane Space CEO talking about how SpaceX's dream of reusable rockets was just that, just a dream? Richard, where do you see your company competing with a $15 million launch? Am I connected? Yes. yes. Um, so today, um, I mean, SpaceX hasn't launched into the geostationary orbit yet, but I mean, they're, they're doing very well and their progress is going forward amazingly well. Um, what I'm discovering in the market, though, is that uh, SpaceX primarily seems to be selling uh, a dream, which is good. We should all dream. I mean, I think the $5 million launch or $15 million is, is a bit of the dream. Uh, personally, I think reusability is a dream. Um, and I think recently I was at a session where I was told that there's no recovery plan because they're not going to have any failures. So I think that's a part of a dream. So at the moment, I feel that we're looking and you're presenting to me, how am I going to respond to a dream? And my answer to respond to a dream is, first of all, you don't wake people up. They have to wake up on their own. And then when the, once the market has woken up to the dream and the reality, then we'll compete with that. But they are looking at a price which is about half yours today. It's a dream. Well, <laughs> all right. Supposing that you wake up and they're there, what would you area and space do? Uh, we would have to react to it. I mean, if it, you know, they're not supermen, so whatever they can do, we can do. We would, we would then have to follow. But today, at the moment, we don't we see it as a reality. Super women are staff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know, I mean, it really is a theoretical question at this moment in time. Yeah, I, I, I personally don't believe it's going to be theoretical for that much longer. They've done everything they've almost said they can do. I mean, that's true. Well, I thought about this clip recently, not because of SpaceX, because they've clearly proved that reusability is a thing, but because of that word dream and dream chaser. In fact, I have never made a video about Sierra Space's dream chaser, and it was one of the first videos that I was told to make when I was starting my channel, Ellie in Space. Now, this was all the way back in 2021. I wasn't really that familiar with any of the, you know, rockets at that point and had to learn my way around the different companies, SpaceX, Blue Origin, ULA, and of course, you know, one of those, Boeing, of course, and one of those being Sierra Space. But here we are over four years later, and I still have never made that video about Dream Chaser, and that's because it still has yet to fly. And the reason I'm making this video is because we got some pretty unfortunate news, which makes me think that we probably won't see it fly until at least 2027. And even then, uh, it's, it's not looking good, and I'm going to explain why. Now, Ars Technica put out a great article, which is what clued me into what's going on with Sierra Space. And I wanted to cover it when it came out last week, but I got married last week, so I'm a little bit late to the party. But I figured that not a lot of people are talking about this on YouTube, so let's get into it. Sierra Space's Dream Chaser has been in development for quite a while, which is not unique. A lot of these space projects, space vehicles, take more time and more money than originally planned. However, not only is this taking more time than expected, it also had government backing, which has recently been pulled back a bit. You know me, I live for curiosity. Whether it's rockets, Mars missions, or the future of humanity in space, I'm always chasing answers. But here's the thing, in today's world, we're drowning in information and not all of it is trustworthy. That's why I've been loving 1440. It's a knowledge collective built for insatiably curious people like us. Instead of doom scrolling through noise and algorithms, 1440 gives you fact-checked, human-curated knowledge. They cut through the chaos and give you just the clarity you need to actually understand the world. And the best part is, you're not alone. You're joining a community of curious minds who care about truth, discovery, and connecting big ideas. For me, curiosity isn't just a trait, it's a muscle. And reading 1440 every day feels like exercise for that muscle. It keeps me inspired and it makes me a better storyteller for this channel. So if you wanna grow your curiosity daily and get clarity in the middle of chaos, 
Join me and millions who come to 1440 every day to learn, explore, and make sense of the world together. Head to join1440.com, that's join1440.com, and start your journey with the Knowledge Collective. Stay curious, and I'll see you in space after I read my 1440. Dream Chaser is a lifting body space plane being developed by Sierra Space, and the cargo version is called Dream Chaser Tenacity. It's designed to carry pressurized and unpressurized cargo to low Earth orbit and then return to Earth and land on a runway like a small plane. It uses a detachable cargo module called Shooting Star, which burns up on re-entry while the space plane returns. And its design is actually derived from NASA's old HL-20 concept from the 90s. So it's a bit different than Dragon or Starliner. It doesn't parachute down. It's a winged sort of vehicle that glides and lands. And that gives it some advantages if it can be made to work reliably. But how did we get here to this point where I've known about this but really haven't been compelled to cover it because not much is happening? Well, here's a rough summary of the rough road that Dream Chaser has had. Originally, Sierra proposed a crewed Dream Chaser under NASA's commercial crew programs in the 2010s, but lost out to Boeing's Starliner and SpaceX's Dragon in the key awards. Rather than giving up, Sierra pivoted the design to cargo missions to serve the ISS under contract. And as of now, the first flight, Demo 1, is scheduled for late 2026. But, and this is the big but, NASA and Sierra Space have just modified their contract such that NASA is no longer obligated to accept Dream Chaser for ISS resupply. Instead, they'll do a free flying demonstration in late 2026, which many space experts are saying basically translates to probably 2027. And here's a quote from NASA. Development of new space transportation systems is difficult and can take longer than what's originally planned. The ability to perform a flight demonstration can be a key enabler in a spacecraft's development and readiness. Another blunt phrasing in reporting, NASA says it is, quote, no longer obligated to order ISS resupply missions from Sierra. Also, the plan to have Dream Chaser dock with the ISS has been dropped for that first flight. Instead, SSC Demo 1 will be a free flyer mission. And remember, ISS is scheduled to deorbit in 2030. It's the reason that the Boeing Starliner also has a precarious fate, considering that it's only had, well, half of a mission. I can't even call it one because it came back uncrewed and they may use it for cargo soon. But again, once we have a different space station and the ISS is retired, Starliner will basically be obsolete. So because Dream Chaser, if and when it flies, is not going to berth with the space station now, that guaranteed business was taken away. NASA had previously committed to multiple cargo flights under CRS-2, but now those are optional, contingent on success. This means a lot more risk for Sierra, and the demonstration could fail or be delayed, and many analysts see this as a huge blow. So basically, the safety net's being pulled away even before the plane has flown a full mission. The margin for error shrinks. So why is this so crazy and I think pretty newsworthy? Well, this is an extremely ambitious vehicle combining rocket ascent, orbital operations, re-entry heating, and a runway landing. That set of capabilities has very few precedents. The space plane concept is tough to get right. The space shuttle was a triumph, but expensive and fragile. It suffered from thermal protection, maintenance complexity, etc. And Dream Chaser has to solve these problems better. Dream Chaser's heat shield uses tiles comparable in spirit to shuttle tiles, but fewer in number and larger in size. For example, about 2,000 tiles versus 24,000 tiles for a shuttle orbiter. But each tile is unique in size, thickness, and shape, and has to withstand re-entry stress. Sierra claims their material is stronger, but it's still a risk. In fact, I saw someone who actually worked on the Sierra Space Dream Chaser comment about this. I wanted to interview him, but right now he's working for SpaceX, which means he can't do interviews, but he wrote, I spent years tiling this ship, drilling composites and making every detail perfect. 
Management was a disaster and even tried to convince us they were on par with SpaceX. Now that I work on Starship, comments like that sound even more childish than before. RIP Chaser never to be. And this was after Sierra Space posted on September 25th, Dream Chaser's first flight will be a free flyer demonstration mission, which is expected to prove the technology and deliver critical data to NASA. We believe this approach will provide us with the flexibility to address the nation's most pressing national security space challenges while continuing to advance Dream Chaser's capabilities for NASA and commercial customers. Our team will be prioritizing first flight readiness with Dream Chaser targeting a launch in late 2026 to align with expected launch vehicle availability as we position Dream Chaser as a national asset available for future national security and defense demonstrations. Hmm. Which to me kind of seems like they're trying to put a positive spin on a pretty devastating development. And yes, I tried to do my due diligence to reach out to Sierra Space for an interview. I was happy that they answered me. That's not always the case. But, uh, you know, they said, thanks for my interest. We appreciate your work. And right now, the team is fully focused on vehicle testing at SSPF, so they're unable to participate in interviews. But I did reach out to them, and they sort of commented, basically, that they can't at this time. So I do appreciate that. And so at this point, we compare Dream Chaser to some of the other options, and we see why Dream Chaser not yet even proven, uh, you know, it's going to be tough for them to get into the game. For example, Dragon... Obviously, the workhorse, NASA trusts Dragon, it's proven, and it's got economies of scale. Starliner has suffered repeated delays, um, software safety issues, but, you know, it still may be able to deliver cargo to the ISS. I think we might at least see one more mission out of Starliner. Cygnus is simpler, just cargo. Uh, doesn't return anything, but has been proven to work. And Dream Chaser, of course, is trying to be the best of both worlds, but that means facing more technical challenges than a simple capsule or cargo dispenser. So the change to a free flyer first mission with no docking is a telling sign. Unfortunately, with this pivot, I feel like Dream Chaser is losing its biggest reason for existing. And this is happening all over the place in the space industry, <coughs> SLS, of course. Unfortunately, cost overruns and significant delays of legacy space providers is probably dooming the Sierra Space Project now. And worst case scenario, Dream Chaser ends up being kind of an expensive engineering museum piece, never delivering on its promises or shipped off to a corporate graveyard. Could it happen? It could. And I, I really hope that you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe in 2026, late 2026, they'll launch and they'll get things going and they'll have some successful missions. But I just wanted to finally talk about this. I feel like, you know, um, the way that it was worded, it kind of seems optimistic. And I see it as, you know, uh, moving backwards and in the wrong direction. So here's my first and who knows, maybe last video. Probably not. We'll probably have more developments with uh, Sierra Space Dream Chaser. But it is another reason that, you know, I'm not over here constantly trying to be a SpaceX fangirl, but they deliver. And uh, I think SpaceX is the reason that we will actually secure a real presence in space for the foreseeable future. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I appreciate all of your support on Ellie Space. If you liked it, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. It's free, and I'll see you in the next video.